Hi guys, in this episode, I'm gonna talk about uh, a first price auction. So, what is the game? Um, <clears throat> there are two players for simplicity, um, and they would like to buy uh, one undivisible good, and this good is auctioned, and the rule, the auction rule, is the first price auction. So what is the first price auction? Well, it's a simultaneous move game. So simultaneously and independently, uh, player one and two write down on a piece of paper their price, bids, B1 and B2. Those bids can be any number between zero and infinity. Well, then they uh, sort of close the, they, they, they write these prices into a piece of paper, they put it in an envelope and they hand it to the auctioneer, the person who sells or who runs the auction. Well, then the auctioneer opens those envelopes and looks at the bids. Whoever had the highest bid, all right, so the player who has the highest bid will win the object and pays the price, the bid he made. The other bidder is going to lose the object. All right. So therefore, the payoff of player I, given that he bid B I and his opponent bid B J, all right. Uh, this is if he wins. If he wins means his bid is higher than, uh, I mean, higher than or equal to uh, the his opponent's bid. In this case, he's going to. Um, he's going to get this payoff, VI minus BI, his willingness to pay minus the actual price he pays. If he loses, which means his bid was strictly less than uh, the, the bid of the opponent, he's going to get zero. Well, here you may say, well, this equality, what if the bid of player one and two are equal? So who is really winning? Well, again, this is, in, is, this, this is irrelevant. Why is it irrelevant? Well, because this is meaning the bid of player one and bid of player two are equal to each other is a zero probability event. Why? Well, we are because we are going to assume a continuous probability distribution. All right. Trust me. So I do not want to complicate the payoff function by assuming that what would happen if their bid were equal. All right. So without loss of generality, we can just put this and ignore the equality sign, all right? Because as I said, the equality is a zero probability event in this environment. Well, uh, we assume that the valuations are private information. Player one knows his own valuation, how much he wants to pay. Player two also knows his own valuation, uh, but they are unsure about their opponent's valuation. But they agree that their valuations are drawn from a probability distribution, a uniform probability distribution over 0, 100, which means I know my valuation. It's V1. I'm player one, let's say. I don't know my opponent's valuation, but I know that his, his valuation is either 0 or, or 100 or any number in between 0 and 100 with equal probability. So here it's very important that the cumulative distribution function, a probability distribution function for this uh, uh, the, the distribution is going to be f of x equal x divided by 100 because it's a uniform distribution. The question is, what is the Bayesian-Nash equilibrium strategies, bids of this game? However, I do not want to find any Bayesian-Nash equilibrium. I want to find symmetric Bayesian-Nash equilibrium where each player bids um, only a, a, a ratio of his or her valuation. What does that mean? That means I am looking for Bayesian-Nash equilibria where player, player one and player two's bids are symmetric, meaning if their valuations are the same, if this is the case, they're going to bid exactly the same, uh, uh, same uh, money. And their bid is a function of their valuation. A times VI, A is some uh, non-zero uh, number, okay? Uh, I'm sorry, non-negative or positive number, all right? Maybe they're gonna bid, so if A is equal to one, for example, uh, they're going to bid their valuation. A can be greater than one, that means they're, they're going to bid higher than their valuation, which shouldn't be an equilibrium, by the way. If, it, if, if A is less than one, well, that means they only pay a uh, bid, the par, por, a portion of their valuation, all right? I don't know what A is. This is what I'm going to find. There might be a bunch of other Bayesian-Nash equilibria where 
the, the strategies are not symmetric or maybe they do not uh, bid a portion of their uh, a ratio of their valuations, but some other form, functional form. Yes, there are a bunch of other Bayesian Nash equilibria, but let's focus on this. Uh, focusing on this basic, I mean, narrowing our focus is making the problem and the solution, not the problem, but the solution easier. This is why we narrow the focus onto symmetric and linear bits. All right, the solution is, as you see, is just a few lines, but I'm going to explain it in detail. So here's the solution, and this is how we solve it. So suppose I want to find player i's bid, and let's say it is x, all right? Is it equal to a times vi? I don't know. I don't care. Some x. Okay? Well, the thing is, I fix my opponents, the other player's uh, strategy, remember? And how do I fix it? Well, remember, I am looking for Bayesian-Nash equilibrium where players bid in this linear fashion. So, therefore, in any Bayesian-Nash equilibrium, let me fix that the opponent bids linearly. But player I may actually prefer to bid non-linearly, all right? We don't know. So let me put I's bid as X, can be anything. It doesn't have to be linear, but because I am looking for linear uh, Nash equilibrium, Bayesian Nash equilibrium, the opponents, I'm, I'm fixing the opponent's bid as A times VJ. All right, so here I calculate the expected payoff of player I. So what is it? So that's important. Expected utility, expected payoff of player I, given his bid and his opponent bid, is the following. If he wins, right, probability of winning, times, if he wins, what's going to be his payoff? VI minus his bid. VI minus his bid is X. Don't forget. Okay, good. Plus, probability of losing, times, what is his payoff in this case? Zero. Hmm. So, you know what? I can ignore this part because it's going to be multiplied by zero. So, therefore, all I do care is this. What is probability of winning? Well, remember, uh, player I can win only if his bid, which is X, greater than or equal to, again, doesn't matter, uh, his opponent's bid, BJ. But what is BJ? It's equal to A times VJ. All right. So, here... What does that mean? That means as long as Vj is less than or equal to x divided by a, player i is going to win. Hmm. But don't forget, Vj is a random parameter. So Vj is randomly distributed between 0 and 100. Uh, oops, what am I doing? I'm sorry. So it's a, a 0, 100. A uniform distribution. So Vj is somewhere here. And what I know is that if Vj is less than or equal to a over x, all right, so if this is a over x, as long as Vj is in this area, player i is going to win. If Vj is higher than, so if it is in this region, this is the lose region, this is the win region. So the question is, player i doesn't know the value of Vj. He just knows that it is randomly distributed according to this probability distribution. So therefore, what is the probability of winning is in fact equal to this. Uh, so let me write it here. Probability of winning is equal to probability that this Vj parameter, which I don't know, is less than x divided by a. But what is this probability? Well, because the Vj is uniformly distributed, this is f of x over a, right? Because this is a uniform distribution, which is equal to, uh, so here my x, I'm sorry for using the same uh, notation. So this is f of y equals y over 100, all right? So because y here is equal to x over a, I just divide it by 100. So it's going to be x divided by 100a. So the probability of winning is therefore x divided by 100a. In this case, I'm going to get vi minus x payoff. So this is my expected payoff when I bid x. Clear? Good. Well, here, by the way, be careful. Uh, because x is the price I pay, I obviously would like to decrease x. 
But the thing is, as I decrease x, my probability of winning will also decrease. So therefore, there is a trade-off. I want to decrease x, but I don't want to decrease it too much because in this case, I'm going to decrease the probability of winning as well. So this expected utility is going to capture this uh, trade-off. Well, what x value maximizes my expected utility, right? In the Bayesian-Nash equilibrium, fixing my opponent's strategy, I best response him, meaning I choose a strategy x that maximizes my expected utility, expected payoff. Well, I have to solve the first order conditions. How so? Take the derivative of this function with respect to x, set it equal to zero and solve for x. If you do that, this is what you're gonna get. Hmm. So that means in the Bayesian-Nash equilibrium, if my opponent is playing a linear strategy, my strategy, my optimal strategy, my best response strategy should be vi divided by two, meaning uh, this is my strategy, B, the bid has to be equal to vi, oops, sorry, sorry let me, bi vi, because remember the strategies here are functions of uh, 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 valuations, because each valuation is a type, and so functions are, uh, fun I'm sorry, strategies are functions that maps each type into a strategy, into a number. Uh, a price, a bid. So therefore, bid function is a function of valuation vi, and according to this result, has to be equal to vi divided by two. So therefore, I just learn that a has to be two. Let me cal uh, sort of conclude. The Bayesian-Nash equilibrium in symmetric and linear strategies is such that player one, v1, player two, the bidding strategies are as follows. Each player basically bids half of their uh, valuations. All right, half. So if, for example, if it happens that player one's valuation, the true valuation is 50, player two's true valuation is 80, well, what's gonna happen in the Bayesian-Nash equilibrium of this game, assuming that you know the Bayesian, they are going to play uh, a symmetric and and, and, and linear Bayesian Nash equilibrium. Well, player one is gonna bid $25, player two is gonna bid $40, and so player two is going to win, all right? And he's going to pay $40. So what is gonna be his payoff? Well, the payoff of player two is going to be, because he won 80 minus, he's gonna be paying $40, so his payoff will be 40 in equilibrium. And what about player two's payoff? Well, it's gonna be zero. All right, so that's the Bayesian-Nash equilibrium of this game.